Welcome to Tourism Talk. I'm Laura Oswald, Marketing Director at the Paducah Convention and Visitors Bureau. Today, I'm so excited to have Bonnie Browning with us, one of our favorite guests each year. <laughs> we, always, um, we always film a Quilt Week preview, and this is one of our most watched episodes online. So we know that not only local viewers are watching, but we're reaching around the world. And so we're very excited to have Bonnie here. She's the AQS Executive Show Director. Welcome, Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you for joining us again. And thank you for the beautiful set decorations today. Well, yes. You know what? We're all about quilts. We have to have quilts when we do this program. That's right. It really brightens up the set today and will be a great sort of um, platform for us to preview this year's show. But before we get into that, um, you all made a big announcement since the last time we filmed a tourism talk. You announced the 2014 economic impact figures for Quilt Week. And many of, many of us know that Quilt Week brings thousands of quilters from around the world to Paducah and creates a great cultural impact from the sharing and exchanges and learning and celebration of quilting that happens, but also a great impact on our community. So tell us a little bit about that announcement. Well, you know, tourism is the third largest city, or third largest industry in the state of Kentucky. And so we know that AQS helps with that quite a bit. Last year we had more than 32,000 people attended our show. And the economic impact of having that many people in our community is over $25 million. Wow. Uh, and so that's like all of the money that people spent and and then that's turned over when they go and eat in the restaurants and buy gas. And so that's how they calculate it, that it's the, the total impact that our event has. And that's huge. I mean, it yes. really is a huge, a huge boost to our community and to our businesses all mm -hmm. over the city. And of course, we know we reach clear up into Mount Vernon in Marion, Illinois. We go clear down to Clarksville, Tennessee, where we have people staying. And so it isn't just Eastern Kentucky. Western Kentucky. <laughs> it isn't just Western Kentucky, but it is also into Missouri and into Tennessee and Southern Illinois. Absolutely. And we love having all of those people here for the purpose of quilting um, and, and enjoying the art um, and celebrating that. And before we really get into the preview, I do want to point out that brings up a great point. People may be looking for lodging places to stay while they're here. So paducah.travel is a great resource for trip planning tools, that Quilt Week lodging list that we work with you on, um, the host home program and other resources. And your website, which is? Is uh, quiltweek.com, real easy. We're called AQS Quilt Week now. And so quiltweek.com is our website. And, um, and, and actually, let's just talk a little bit about the housing because Right now, if you called most of the hotels, they're going to tell you that the hotels are filled. Um, and people cancel out, so it doesn't hurt for you to check back with them. Um, but starting in early February, the host home program will take effect, and that's where private homes offer to house quilters while they're here. And uh, it makes it so that we have a lot more people can stay in the city. So if you don't have a room right now, uh, after the 1st of February, you can go to paducah.travel, click on the quilting button at the top, and then you'll see a menu of different things related to the quilt show, and, and click on the quilt lodging button, and it'll take you to a form you can fill out for that. But don't do it until February because they're working on it right now and it takes them a few weeks to get it all put together. Absolutely. Gathering those host homes yes. um, to facilitate that program. But definitely do check out those um, resources, like Bonnie said. And you'll find um, on, the, on the lodging list, you'll find much information about booking policies and sort of the amenities with different, um, with different lodging properties you might select. So from there, back to quiltweek.com, registration is open. We just opened it, and so it's open right now for AQS members. We always give our members just a little bit of a head start. Uh, that's one of the benefits they get with their membership is that they, they get to be the first ones to register. So if you are a member and haven't received an email from us that has a link to do that, 
please call our number, which is 270-898-7903. Ask for the registration department, and the girls will be happy to take care of you there. Wonderful. But you know what? We, we're going to have great quilts again. They just juried the quilts, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so uh, they're all different styles. Beautiful quilts like the ones that you see hanging behind us that are uh, appliqued and with a lot of thread painting on them. To the ones on the table, uh, we have pieced quilts on the table and everything in between. Painting on the quilts, um, we have uh, whole cloth quilts that are nothing but just quilting to make up the entire quilt. So it doesn't make any difference what style of quilt you like, you're going to see some of those in our contest. Absolutely, and we love that. Each year there's such a range. There's the pictorial quilts, which I mentioned. I always love seeing those. There's some great um, sort of cultural, you see a lot of different cultural representations. And you had a modern quilt category as well that you've launched recently. Yes, I think this will be the third year now that we've had the modern quilt. And you know, that's kind of like a, um, a simpler style. Uh, they do simple quilting most of the time. And, um, and they let the color kind of be the focus. Uh, so it is a different style of quilt than what we're used to seeing. Yeah, and, and we, we love that about AQS, certainly. <laughs> um, so when you get online, you obviously can register for multi-day passes, a daily pass, that sort of thing. But you also can register for much more, the workshops. Oh, the workshops, and we have great teachers. Uh, Linda Poole will be here teaching how to do paint and applique, where you paint on fabric your design, and then you just have one piece to applique down. Uh, it's a different technique, and a lot of people are wanting to learn how to do painting on their quilts. Laura Murray is painting, and she's using paint sticks to paint on, on fabric. It's a great new trend. We always like to see what the new trends are in the quilting world, and that sounds like a, a good one. Well, and, and of course, everybody wants to know how to use these sewing machines that we're buying, whether it's a home sewing machine or a long arm quilting machine, and we have lots of different classes for that. Some of them are sit down, some of them are stand up models on the long arm, um, but we have an, a variety of teachers that are teaching those classes. Wonderful. And they fill fast too, so you want to get in there and get those. Yes, sure. And you have lectures as well many times and special events. Yes, you know, the special events are what brings the quilters all together. Every evening at least we have an event. This year, you know, the tent makers of Cairo have yes. visited our shows over the past three years. And, uh, and so we've had them here dem demonstrating their, their applique technique. And we've also had exhibits of their work. Um, and you remember a couple years ago, I think, we had a photographer that was here with them. Well, he has now finished his film and we'll be working with Maiden Alley, Alley Cinema to debut the Tent Makers of Cairo, the film that was done by Kim Beamish. Wonderful. And so we'll be doing that on Wednesday evening first, and then they'll be showing it at other times throughout the rest of the week. So that's Wednesday. Thursday night, our big thing always is the quilt auction that benefits mm -hmm. the Quilt Museum. And it will be in the Eisenhower room, so we won't put you out in the cold or outside. Or in, last time I think we had rain when we were out there. Um, so it'll be in the Eisenhower room, and so you'll want to get there early to debut from 5 to 6, and then the auction begins at 6 o'clock. On Friday, uh, in the afternoon at lunchtime, we have Picnic in the Park at Dolly McNutt Plaza. It's turned out to be a really fun event, and each year we have a different instructor who brings along some of her quilts. So it's kind of like a big show and tell of the instructor's quilts, and then you get, uh, I think this year they're going to do a grilled out lunch. Great, and who is this year's quilter? Uh, th this year's quilt is Linda Hahn, and Linda Hahn is famous for the books that she's done on New York Beauty, which Great. is one of my favorite designs. I haven't made one of those yet, but I love that design. So you'll probably be there. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then Friday night we have Ricky Timms will be at the uh, Carson Center. And I know sometimes people think, oh gosh, I've already seen Ricky Timms. I can just tell you Ricky Timms does not do the same program twice. Whatever he did last year, this year will be different from that. Now you may hear some of the same jokes that he uses in it, um, but he'll do a different program for us on Friday evening. And then, of course, the, one of the most popular events that we do is the All-Star Review. Mm -hmm. It's where the teachers do a 10-minute demo of something, and 
we do it on Tuesday from 1 till 3 and on Saturday from 1 to 3. And we give you a little book with a handout from each of the instructors. It is one of our most popular events and you'll learn more in that one event than you'll learn if you take classes all week long. Yeah. Uh, and it usually sells out, so you don't want to waste a time getting your ticket for that. And that's a great way to either start or end the week. We always see many people flocking to that. Like you said, it's very highly attended. Well, you so know, they tickets. start coming into town on the weekend before mm -hmm. the show. So that's really the first event that we have. So it, even the Tuesday one is usually a sellout. Sure. Absolutely. And, and that Tuesday night, there's the sneak preview. Tuesday night, we'll start with the awards presentation. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that just a little bit differently. Uh, we will again have finger food hors d'oeuvres and we're going to start that at 4.30 in the afternoon mm -hmm. and then at 5 o'clock we will start the announcement of the awards and you want to make sure that you're there because we're going to give away some prizes at the Great. awards presentation this time which include uh, lodging for two for the 2017 show Right. So uh, so you'll get to have your room taken care of if you win that Wonderful. package. And uh, we have an Elna sewing machine and uh, a big basket of fabric from, uh, from Robert Kaufman. And then AQS is going to give a, a big basket of goodies that somebody will win. And we'll be sprinkling those throughout the evening and you have to be there to win. So uh, you want to make sure you get your ticket for the awards presentation. Very good. Good, very good. Well, speaking of the awards, we have some beautiful quilts around us today that are actually contest quilts. They are. Wonderful. And, and in addition, how many contest quilts are there, first of all? Uh, uh, we have over 400 quilts that are juried. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to set a limitation because of the space that we have to hang them in. And uh, so, you know, someone's going to win that $20,000 yes. best of show. Then we give three $12,000 prizes for hand workmanship, those sewn on a home sewing machine, and those sewn on a long arm quilting machine. Uh, so those are our four big awards. And uh, we actually display those on the stage when we do the announcement on, on uh, Tuesday evening. It's always such a dramatic <laughs> unveiling. We all love that. So definitely plan to be there as well. And well so then following that is the sneak yes. preview. And in the past few years, we've been starting that at 7.30. This time we're going to start it at 7. So it'll be mm -hmm. 7 until 9. So the awards hors d'oeuvres start at 4.30, the program at 5 to 6.30, Seven start sneak preview and it'll go until nine o'clock. Wonderful, wonderful. The best way to start the show and then Wednesday the show starts and runs through Saturday. And while you're at the show, I know there are always obviously those many contest quilts to see and marvel at, but there are several other special quilt displays as well. Sakwa usually partners with AQS and this yes, year they are again. And this year their theme is people in portraits and oh my goodness, they've done some great people quilts. Great. And, uh, but we also have two international exhibits. We have a Symphony of Color from Japan, and then the, the next exhibit is called World Painters Challenge. And this sounds so cool. Oh, they, took, they took famous painters and they assigned that name to three different quilters, one from the U.S., one from France, and one from, the, and one from Japan. And those three quilters then Either they could take a painting by that famous painter or just their style of painting and work that into a quilt. And they're all hung in a panel, so you're going to get to see all three of those quilts right together. It's wow. really fun to see how they interpreted them. Yeah, it really, you get to see the difference in creative expression and, and how people can really take an idea and make it make it their own. Wonderful. And not only that, but the fabrics and everything. Yes. The coloring they used, you know, uh, we Americans do it in one style, mm -hmm. the French doing it in a different, and Japanese do it even differently. And so to see those all together is a, a really nice exhibit. Yes, and speaking of international quilters, we see many internationals come to the Paducah show. Can you talk a little bit about that international audience that AQS has? Well, fortunately, we have, we have tour groups that love mm -hmm. to, to bring the international quilters to our show here in Paducah. Um, and we always have one or two busloads that come from Japan. Mm -hmm. um, but we get entries from all over the world, from 
uh, South Korea and in the Netherlands and Germany and Spain and uh, Israel. I mean, we really do get entries from all over. That's so, that's so great. The world of quilting here in Paducah. Well, it shows how small we can make the world mm -hmm. uh, through quilting uh, because, you know, I've traveled a lot to other yes. countries and I never feel out of place because we can always talk quilting. Yes, and that's something that we've seen um, as Paducah was named a UNESCO Creative City very much for this um, place that we have in the quilting world and being able to connect people through quilting through events in an organization like AQS based here in Paducah. And it really, you really do see how across language barriers, across continents and, and miles, you can really connect through the art. Do you know, I taught a class when I went to Japan on one of my trips over there, and I taught in the first base dugout of the Tokyo Dome, wow. where, the, where the Tokyo Giants ball team plays. It was the only place they had for us <laughs> to hold our class. But I had about 25 students. Most of them didn't speak English, and I spoke little Japanese, but I used an interpreter and you know, once you can watch somebody do what it is yes. that you're doing, uh, it made it so that the language barrier was not there at all. Absolutely, that's wonderful. And we're excited with your Japanese connections. We're excited to see those Japanese quilts this year with Symphony of Colors. Yes. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the other events that happen in the community. Um, we know there are many after 32 years of AQS. Um, there are great things that happen all throughout Paducah and the region. What are some of those sanctioned events this year that we should make sure to make note of? Well, first of all, let me just tell you what a sanctioned event sure. is. Uh, you know, it costs a lot of money to promote and to be able to get people into our community. And so I know there are lots of events out there who would love to have us promote, but we've set up this program where they can become a sanctioned event and they pay a fee to help with some of those advertising expenses. And it means then all through the week we're promoting them and we're promoting them prior to the show. Well, in some cases, we even collect admission money for them so that you can buy your tickets to everything you want to go to yeah. uh, right online at, at quiltweek.com. But we again have the Paducah Derby, and this was new in 2015. It's with the Merriman House, which is our uh, abuse center, and uh, they rented out ducks, and they took the ducks out to Noble Park, and put them in the pond. And it's my understanding they're gonna do that again today. At first we were gonna do it in the river, but it's a lot more problem to control the ducks yeah. on the river. <laughs> they can get away easily. Uh, so, uh, so they're gonna do some fun things to be able to get the ducks to move. And, and so you can rent just one for $5, or you can rent a, a quack pack of six for $25. And uh, anyway, so that's a fun event. We'll be, they'll be uh, right in the entryway of the atrium of the convention center. So you can stop there, but you can go to, um, I can't tell you the website right off the tip we'll of my head. We'll have the links, I'm sure, on both of our websites for okay. that. Well, anyway, but you can go before, if you can't come to the show, you can still rent a duck. Uh, and you would still win, but they'll have some cash prizes. That's great. Uh, I think last year they gave away $1,000 was the top prize, and so oh, that would cool. be really fun. Sure. Uh, well, anyway, and so the Paducah Derby is number one. Um, the Rotary does their antique quilt show with some vendors at the... Um, at the Civic Center. Civic Center. Center. Civic Center, yes, Civic mm -hmm. Center, and that's a little bus ride, or you need to drive there. Um, and so they will be doing that again this year. And you know, that money goes to scholarships for children. So that's been a really good fundraiser for them. Then we have the National Quilt Museum and everybody needs to go to the National Quilt Museum. If they haven't been there, they need to go because it's world-class quilts. There always are three different galleries of quilts, a special exhibit. They always have the new quilts from an old favorite, yes. uh, which is a, uh, a contest that they run, and these will be the 18 semifinalists, and so you'll get to see the winners of that contest. And you can meet the winners many times. The, on Friday, they do a book signing. Mm -hmm. um, AQS publishes a book about that, and so you will be able to meet them there. And this is a great year to go to the museum as it's their 25th anniversary. 
So they're having the Gala of the Unexpected and some very special exhibits, not only during Quilt Week, but throughout the whole year. So definitely check out their schedule too. Yes, but they don't want to miss the museum. Sure. It really is, there, there really is no other museum that has the quality of the quilts that they have that. And of course, you know, the top, uh, the top four winners uh, and, and then the best wall quilt. So the, those five quilts um, are purchase awards. And if the quilter accepts that money, then that quilt goes into the quilt mm -hmm. museum. So every year they always have those big quilts that after the show is over, you can still see some of the quilts because those winners go there. Okay, now another sanctioned event is the Yeiser Art Gallery. And they will have their fantastic fibers and right now they're working on that, so I don't even have any pictures yet of what will be there. But it's always a wonderful use of all kinds of fibers. Some of them are made into sculptures, and uh, there will be quilts there too. They always have some quilt entries. Uh, but using fiber in many different ways. It's always colorful, and there's many 3D designs. Um, it always, I think it blows my mind every year what what has come in and what has been thought up out there in the world that has made its way to fantastic fibers. Well, and then we have Eleanor Burns is always a sanctioned event as well, and she will be doing some things both at her shop, which is downtown on 4th Street, at uh, their, their uh, warehouse on Kentucky Avenue, and then another building on Jefferson Street. And so we'll have all of that on our website. Yes. And she has some things that you need to register for, and you need to do that on her website. We don't actually take the registrations for her. Uh, but you can buy tickets to the Yeiser, to the Quilt Museum, and to the Rotary right on the AQS Quilt Week site. Great, very convenient. I know, you can but you know what? All of those things are different mm -hmm. from what AQS does at the show. And so if you really want to come and be immersed in quilts for the whole week, yes. you have plenty of things that you can do right here in Absolutely. the city. Absolutely. And I love that you all make it so easy to get some of those key admissions taken care of. Um, but certainly do check out quiltweek.com and paducah.travel and navigate to that quilting section that Bonnie mentioned. And look at those Quilt Week events that are coming up and you'll see more details about these sanctioned events and other events throughout the community. Can we talk just a little bit about food? Absolutely. Because you know when we bring this many tent people into our community it's really hard for people to eat. Uh, at the show itself uh, we set up a food tent with some vendors around the outside uh, of the tent so that we can have food right there on the grounds. If you're taking classes you don't have time to go someplace else. Right. You just need to run out there. And they have a good variety and you don't want to miss the Boy Scout strawberry shortcake. Always a favorite. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we have a number of restaurants downtown. So if you're walking from the, the convention center and going to the Quilt Museum, you can just walk another block and you'll be right in the heart of a number of restaurants. And then you go one more block and you're going to be at the Finkel Building where AQS has some more vendors and then we have our big Hurt Book Sale in the back room. That's open on Tuesday too. So if you get to town early, you can go to uh, those sanctioned events will be open, the Iser will be open, the Rotary will be open, the museum, and then the Finkel Bookstore. So that's a right. whole day. Yes, 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 come in on Tuesday. <laughs> right. Um, so great dining downtown, and you can always get a dining guide at the visitor's information table and see some of the other spots around town that you can um, can dine in, in different areas of the community. And the, many of the churches do special dinners to accommodate the um, large number of visitors in the community. And those are fun, often have sort of antique bed turnings or quilt shows or some sort of way that they try to incorporate the theme of the week. And if you have a large group, that you're with. Uh, some of those churches will take seating yes. reservations and so I know that a lot of our tours when they come to town like to go to the churches. Number one they're going to get good, good home cooked food and lots of good desserts yeah. but they also can do it where they can seat all their people and that's almost impossible in the restaurants during the show. Yes. Yes, so definitely check out all those resources and take advantage of some of those special dining opportunities. Um, a little bit of kind of general information. Once you get to the show, um, how to navigate. Um, I know the convention center has exhibits and then there are exhibits 
Um, you mentioned the Hurt Book Sale and then the Dome Pavilion as well. One of the things that we do, because there is not enough parking anywhere, um, people park the streets full all down around the convention center, uh, but we do have a bus system, and this is paid for by the hotels and the different attractions that need to have service and have people delivered to them. Uh, I know that the Rotary always is on, Hancock Fabrics is on the bus route, uh, the hotels are on the bus route, uh, Fern Lake Campground, I believe, is on the bus route. Um, but that's the easiest way. Now, I will just caution you that we carry more than 30,000 people on those buses throughout the four days of our quilt show. And so if you're going to be at a class at 8.30 in the morning, you need to make sure you're out there to catch a bus at 7 to 7.30 um, because uh, if they fill the bus up, they have to come back and dump people off and then go back. Uh, and I know that's probably one of the biggest complaints that we get oh, is that it takes a while. Uh, but you just need to plan. Mm -hmm. Just put some extra time into your planning and uh, you'll find it to be very convenient. We also have auxiliary parking at Carson Park, which is our fairgrounds. And it's, um, if you're coming in off of the interstate on, on uh, get off at exit four, if you come down and turn right at the Dairy Queen, that's 28th Street, and it'll be, oh, it'll be a few blocks down there, but it's real easy to find and you'll be able to see it quite easily. Uh, but we have a, a shuttle that goes back and forth there, and so that's a kind of a speedy bus. Absolutely, and like you said, just plan ahead. And once you're at the convention center, I always think that ambassadors are such a great resource to get you on the right bus, to get where you need to go, whether it's back to your hotel or to another sanctioned event. Um, I think they're a great resource for us. Well, we couldn't do without the buses because that just moves a lot of people through this community. And since most of our hotels are out at exit four, uh, but we have a bus that goes to exit 11, which is like the best Western uh, hotel right. there, and the hotels at exit three. And so we, we do get them all over the city. Wonderful. Well, definitely check out quiltweek.com, like we said, and paducah.travel, the Visitors Bureau website, for a bit more information. Um, you can request an April events guide, which is the brochure that the Visitors Bureau puts out each year with the Dogwood Trail map and, and the AQS events and those sanctioned events and information as well. Um, one other thing that I just want to mention briefly that people may or may not have been aware of yet, iQuilt.com. You all have launched a great new platform to connect people to quilting where they are at any time to the best instructors. So tell us a little bit more about this. Well, iQuilt is our online uh, quilt classes. And uh, yeah, I was a guinea pig, so I went and did one first. Uh, and so I have a class up there on borders and finishing touches. But we have a whole variety of different classes that are done by really well-known and experienced mm -hmm. uh, instructors. And uh, I am just really pleased at the quality of the taping. We go to Denver and tape, and it takes several months for them to get that all put together. But I believe now we have, uh, this week we're launching three more, so that should bring us up to 21 classes. And every month they'll be adding some new classes to that. Um, but what you do is you go in and choose your class, and you buy it, you pay for it. And then you will, it will go into your, uh, your dashboard box. And up at the top right-hand corner, you'll see your name. And when you open that, it'll have a list of whatever you've purchased. And from there, you can click and go right to the class. You can't download them, but what you can do is you have access to them from any place that you can get the internet, and they'll be there forever. So it, it, it isn't like something it's here for one year and then it's gone. It's, it's a class that you'll be able to access at any point in time. And I would suggest that uh, people, I know I've done a video on how to put a sleeve on a quilt. I also did that on my class. But I think we've had like 70,000 people have wow. watched that one video. And I have people who tell me they go back Every time they finish a quilt and need to put a sleeve on, they go back and watch it again. That will be what you can do with these classes. If you have a, a technique that's in the class that you're taking, 
Uh, you can ask the teacher questions. There will be downloadable, downloadable materials. Uh, sometimes it'll be patterns, sometimes it'll be instruction sheets, um, but there'll be materials that you'll be able to download and those you can save on your computer. Wonderful. Well, definitely check out iQuilt. Um, get connected with AQS now before the show and we will look forward to seeing you in Paducah this April. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank you for joining us today. One, two, one, two, go. Hello. Hello.